I'm hoping this thing is in focus. Um, it's been quite a while since I uh, spoke with you guys. And uh, I had a dream. I had a what I believe was a rapture dream. And I'm going to try to maybe try to do this little teaching and talk about uh, some things that, that Patrick and I went through. But first I want to pray, Dear Heavenly Father, the Lord told us to pray in your name and whatever we ask in your name that you would grant. So I ask Almighty God in heaven, Father of all creation, that you would open the ears and the eyes of those that are about to watch this, that you would bless them, that you'd take care of their families, that you'd undertake for them, God, that you would give them that first love that they had when they first came to you, that you would cause the spirit of praise and worship to come over them, that they would be able to thank you and praise your name for all the good things that you've done because the time is coming when all of this is going to change. So God, we ask that each and every one seek the Holy Spirit and the infilling. I truly believe that those five virgins that had the oil had the Holy Spirit in them. So God, we ask that they all seek the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that they seek a deeper, meaningful walk with you, that they would desire to become lights in their own communities a lighthouse shining out, showing the love of Christ for mankind through their deeds and through their words, that you'd bless them and help them in the mighty name of your Son, we ask it in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Amen. So, um, first I want to talk about the Bible, you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, there's these people on the internet and they're all talking about the rapture all the time. And don't they have anything else to say? Well, what I want to tell you is, is there, are, there are groups of people and they are called by God to do certain jobs. Not all of us are the hand or the foot. Not all of us are the eyes. You see, there are watchmen, and the job of the watchman is different than the job of a pastor or the job of a uh, intercessor. While they may do those things, they still, if their main function is to be a watchman, then they have to do that calling because the scripture tells us to watch therefore and pray always that you're counted worthy to escape all of these things. And uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the church that, because they had kept his faith, were able to escape the things that are coming to try and tempt the entire world. I'm paraphrasing. You see, so they escape that. So there's some escape thing that's supposed to happen. And how are you going to escape it? By hiding in a cave? If you're, Is, is that what it means? Oh, we're all going to go through this horrible trial. I, we're not. Uh, there is a thing called the rapture, and it is demonstrated over and over again, and it began with the earliest apostles preaching this. Paul the Apostle. So all of these people that are saying that there is no rapture, they are wrong, and that's false teaching. I want to make that clear. Because it tells us in the book of Revelation, that one of those church escapes. The Lord said there'll be two in the field, one working, and then they'll be working, and then boom, one will be taken. There'll be two in a bed and one taken. Wow. Explain that in the book of Revelation, how it shows that, and how, uh, how does Christ take them and immediately turn around and come back and put his feet on the Mount of Olives? You see... There's so much bad teaching, so much 
uh, controversy because somehow people think that they have to um, be uh, beaten and tortured to death to prove themselves worthy. When the Word of God tells us that none of us are worthy, in fact that it is only through the blood and the atonement of Christ and that our thing that we do is repent and ask for forgiveness for our sins and then we have faith and we believe after that and then the works that we do are because of that faith because of our belief in Christ not as a part of our salvation or a condition of our salvation even though we do those things you see we do it because of love not out of a command so if you're not doing those things, you must not have any love. And he said, without love, you will not see God. So what I want to talk to you about is um, the Lord also said in the book of Joel that I do nothing without first I reveal it to my prophets. What did he say? Uh, I do nothing without first I reveal it to my prophets. You see, we need to another thing we need to do is we need to remember to worship the Lord and pray the Bible tells us that the Sun will be darkened and the moon will be turned to blood in those last days and what's getting ready to happen here pretty quick there's gonna be a solar eclipse where the Sun is darkened of course we know that happens all the time but it doesn't always happen near these feast days and I know I've said you know, the Lord could come at any time, and he doesn't have to come on a feast day. But things are looking pretty dire <laughs> for that. So uh, he could come on one of these feast days upcoming, or just shortly before. Don't be surprised. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is in the book of Daniel. You know, Daniel was taken captive uh, when Nebuchadnezzar took Jerusalem and they took the temple and all the temple items and everything and, and Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and in that dream uh, it was very frightening for Nebuchadnezzar and so you know he called the wise men and the soothsayers and the astrologers and all those people of the day and I'm paraphrasing you can read this this is in the in Daniel and he said hey I had this dream and I want you guys to tell me both the dream and the interpretation. He said, if you don't, if you're not able to do that, he says, I'm going to destroy all of you. I'm going to kill you all because you're a bunch of liars. And they said, they got together and they came to him. They said, look, no man can do this. No one can do it. And so then he sent out the word to start killing them. And uh, Daniel was, was one of the captives. And... Daniel said, no, don't kill them. He told his friend, don't tell the king not to kill him. I can, I can give him the dream and the interpretation. So the guy stayed his hand, and King Nebuchadnezzar did, and Daniel went to him and told him his, he told him the dream, and he told him the interpretation of the dream. And so Daniel saved, even those unrighteous people, were saved by the actions of Daniel and you can see he was concerned see he said don't kill them he had compassion on those that didn't know God and he took his own life into his hands by doing this thing and uh, one of the in, in the interpretation of this he saw this giant statue that had a head of gold and then it you know it went down and it had bronze and then it had this and it had that and then the feet had clay and iron and it says in the uh, Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay and and the and Daniel tells us that this time this vision is for the end you see, and the Bible tells us in the days of Noah that there were fallen angels here. Uh, some people call them aliens. You know, they have technology and stuff. Because uh, Satan knows the things of God. So when God cast him out, he had to make machines to get around 
with. He's not just a spirit. He has a body. It says that those angels saw women and they saw they were beautiful and they had sex with them and that's where the giants were born and the men of renown which doesn't really mean great men that were like oh this is really of renown you know he did a good work it meant that they had did these horrible things you know that you read about in some of these old stories you know about giants eating people and killing people and terrorizing that was the renown they were renowned for what they did the evil works and so God brought a flood on the earth and the Lord told us as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. And you notice since Israel became a nation again and started this clock ticking down that we have uh, increased activity with UFOs and and then our, the Vatican and CERN and all this. They're trying to open a doorway to some other reality. The Vatican has came out and said that, that uh, the belief in aliens does not contradict the scripture or anything like that which it doesn't, and they know that. And they have the largest telescope in the world, the largest privately owned telescope called the Lucifer. And see, they're looking for these aliens, and they said, well, if the aliens are outside of the earth, they haven't been influenced like men have, and so therefore they won't, they'll have a gospel that's better and cleaner. And so maybe what happens, you see, when this thing happens, you see, he said they're gonna be here. Their seed will be mixed. In the end days, the last days, with clay, which is man, but it won't adhere. Uh, Daniel's telling us that there's going to be these aliens. It's going to be some part of this lie that comes on the whole world somehow. That uh, they're our brothers. And, they, you know, what I believe is going to happen is you're going to have what Daniel talked about. The, the four nations, which I believe are the, uh, the four horns which would, I think, is the United States, Russia, China, uh, um, Britain, you got the four, and then out of the out of them came this little horn, which I believe is Obama, and that little horn did all these things, and then there's this destruction that comes, and then there's ten new nations come out of that, ten new kings out of those four happening, because there's a destruction that's coming, and then after that, that is where the New World Order is set up, and I believe they probably have contact with these aliens or whatever, and they make some kind of a, you know, everything is revealed. So, I know I haven't talked about it a lot. I don't, I have a lot of experience with that. I've been in a few television interviews because of my, the things, I have pictures of, of these fallen angels and stuff, and I thought they were aliens too, but they're not. They're demons. But, uh, God's really been revealing this to me. But anyway, you know, this is the thing that Daniel was talking about. So be looking for that, all of you who are left behind. This is going to be some thing, and there will be this ten, ten nation thing come out of this, out of this nuclear destruction and maybe, you know, meteor strike in the earth. There's going to be uh, a bunch of ter terror happen, and people are going to be, they won't be able to think straight when this occurs. You see, and it's so powerful, the lie is that it says it will deceive the very elect of God, if it were possible. You see, so, I'm trying to hurry this up before my camera runs out of battery. I just charge it, and it's, it's only half charged. I don't get it. So, anyway, I wanted to talk to you about Pastor Patrick and I met, you know, and we had that little joke going between us there whenever I met him in Petersburg. And I want to tell you people, this, uh, we had one of the most powerful times I've ever had with the Lord showing us things. All along, the Lord had told us that, that we were to work together, you know, and it, and it was, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to do that, you know. And so we had our struggles back and forth, and that's why I had you guys praying for us. And the thing is, the Lord really straightened that out, and he worked some beautiful miracles, and you know, Pastor Patrick really gets the word from the Lord. In fact, the Lord had told us that he was going to set his face like flint towards Jerusalem. And that the church age is ending. That's what he said. It's powerful stuff. Uh, I mean, numerous miracles. For instance, though, there was a message in tongues that came through and... Pastor Patrick was telling me, Gary, you know, like the Lord had had you, uh, gave you the staff of Aaron, the, 
the um, almond staff and the one and the rod that budded. And it, God was, this was God speaking through Pastor Patrick to me. And there's no way Patrick knew that last year I went to an almond field and I cut down a staff out of an off of an almond tree. And then I also uh, got a small rod. God told me, now I want you to get this small one and it's got the buds on it. The fruit was on it. And I was like, okay, I'll get that too. And I got both of those and that's exactly what was said. And then the Lord told us, he, he moved us around this hotel. We came out one side and we're going to go down the other side to pray. And then we just had to keep moving until we got on the far side. This is a huge building, like three 300 feet long. And on the other side are these myrtle trees. And the Lord tells us to, and Patrick says, the Lord just gave me a message about myrtle trees and the angel being underneath. I said, Patrick, you won't believe this. I bought a myrtle tree just three weeks ago and I didn't even know it was a myrtle tree till I got it home. You see, the Lord is working these miracles. God is getting ready to do his end time work where uh, Israel is the focus of God. You see, the staff is going to be... the. The baton is going to be handed back to Israel to complete the work of God on earth. And that's why in the book of Revelation, it talks about Israel and the things that are happened to Israel and 144,000 from Israel and the Antichrist being in Israel and standing in the holy place in the temple. You see, because there is no church. The church has been taken. All right, here I go again. The camera shut off. Uh, the camera has a sensor in the back. It's a Pentax KX, and the sensor heats up sometimes, and it shuts it down. So that's what happened. My battery's a low, too. But anyway, so the Lord gave us the word Nehemiah, and he told us that he wanted to write this down, made us to write it down, and he told us that uh, to set that he was going to set his face like flint towards Jerusalem, and that the church age basically is closing. So you better get in the ark. Don't be on the wall. Don't be walking on the between. You must make a choice soon. The Lord is coming soon, I'm telling you. And Patrick and I couldn't remember what it was, and he talked about the cupbearer and all these things and about the two sticks becoming one. And we're, and, and we were talking, Patrick, Pastor Patrick said, well, Gary, I haven't read that book. In uh, First, I, I did the ending prayer, and I prayed that there'd be a wall of fire around Jerusalem to protect it and some other things. And so anyway... After we prayed, Pastor Patrick was like, I don't know what this means because that's just a like a historical book. As I remember, it's been like 15 years or so since I've read it through and, and all this. And we'll have to study it tomorrow. And so anyway, we, we I, oh yeah, I prayed that we would get secondary confirmation from an outside source about this. And then somebody wrote Patrick the next day and emailed him and said, look, I was instructed to study Nehemiah and to give it to you. And it was the very verses we were talking about. And then the word Patrick and I were looking for, and we talked about, and we couldn't figure out what this word was. It was like describe, but it wasn't describe. It was inscribe. And it's there in the very thing, text that the guy quoted. And it says in there about God making a wall of fire around Jerusalem and about the two sticks, beauty, and all this stuff. You see... God is alive, man, and that's the test of a true prophet and the people who are really hearing from the word from the Lord, you know. So uh, I want to get to this dream real quick, and maybe I'll make another video later and try to do this. But all any pastors that are listening, look, every one of you guys that are listening to this video, when you go to church next Sunday, you need to warn the pastor of that church that the Lord is coming soon, and they have an obligation to speak about the rapture and the, and the Lord returning. If they don't, they're in trouble. He need, they need to call people to repentance. They need to call people to sanctification. If you are not sanctified, if you have sin in your life, if you have not repented, of your sins, all of them, anger, hatred, malice, whatever it is, adultery, uh, stealing, whatever, you're going to be left behind, you may be left behind, I'm telling you, the Lord is serious about this, he wants sanctified people in there, and you have to do that through repentance, you know, this is a serious thing, very serious, and I'm going to tell you how serious. So after Patrick and I prayed, we're talking, we were praying, and we and I asked the Lord, you know, to give us some word 
through a dream or a vision to either Patrick or myself or somebody else to tell us what to do because, you know, I've been stuck in that living in this garage for two years now and I don't know what to do. You know, I have some money, I could probably do something or even try to buy my house out of foreclosure, but I don't know what to do. And Patrick doesn't know what to do because the Lord has given us this big mission but no timing on it. You know, he doesn't tell us how to proceed forward yet, even though he's showing us these miracle things and revealing himself in these powerful ways. And uh, so please pray for us about this. And like I said, talk to your pastors and youth leaders and everybody you know and tell them the Lord is coming. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And uh, so anyway... I prayed, Lord, give us some kind of word on this. We need a word. We need. To, I said, I need to know is the rapture still going to happen? Is it going to happen like we think? Patrick had the dream about the financial crisis in the U.S. on the 18th of August, and then he saw some numbers. The number 23, which is a number I've talked about a lot. The 23rd of September is coming up here pretty quick, and it's an important date. And the Lord said to lower that number. Number. So they begin to throw numbers into this this fountain this uh, pond and then those numbers went down and then another number come up and it was the number 13 which happens to be feast of trumpets the day of feast of trumpets and there's another lady that had a dream that there's a worldwide earthquake which also the lord showed me and she said it happens when they cause israel to divide the land and the un is talking about voting on the 15th to force Israel to divide the land to the 67 borders of the 48 borders. That's the only thing. They're going to make them do it. Now, may, and she said the rapture happens before they divide it. And then the worldwide earthquake hits. So I don't know. But I know I've been shown a worldwide earthquake. And, and she said every person, every uh, country that signs it, that's where it hits. And there's 167 now that are signing it. So that's almost every place on this planet there'll be some type of an earthquake. And so I don't know, Dr. O.R. also saw a worldwide earthquake. And the Lord's told me several times, I don't know if we're going to be here for it. I don't know what's happening. I have a little bit of food and some provisions, you know, and some water. And I advise you to do the same thing and have, you know, have a flashlight and stuff. And then have some flyers for people unless in case the rapture occurs and you're gone and they come to your house and they find these Christian flyers and food and it's blessed be the Lord because look, he provided for us even after these people were gone. You see, you don't have to get a lot. You can get 25 pounds of rice and 25 pounds of beans or 50 of each. You can get some canned food, some can some soups, those cup of noodles, things like that. Some, uh, uh, you could get some powdered milk, you can get water and stuff like that, toilet paper, things like that, you know, for people. So anyway, back to this, I pray for confirmation. And it was late, it was it was 12, 10 at night, and my mind was racing because God was revealing this powerful stuff to Patrick and I. And so I was like, Lord, you've got to put me to sleep. I cannot sleep, my mind's racing, and instantly I fell asleep. And I dreamed that I was in a crowd of people, and they were running in every direction. And it was at dark, dusk, it was getting dark, and they were just running, and they were flailing their arms, and they were screaming, and they were crying, and they were like going from the center point out in all directions, nobody was going together, they were just running for their life, and sheer terror, pandemonium, and I was running with them, I could see myself, and then I was in there running too, and then all of a sudden there was this boom sound, and a violent jerking, and then I was sitting in my bed upright, and this thing was around me, like the thing off of contact with Jody Foster those rings there was three rings and one of them and the other one slowed down and then finally they stopped two of them did and the third one had an inside ring after it stopped and that ring was still turning and there was a date written on that ring and that date was September and then there was a two digit number next to that I don't know if it was the 13th 14th or if it was like the 22nd or the or the 23rd but the Lord said it's going to be just like it was in the movie Tomorrowland. I believe that's what he said to me. And I was like, what? Why would he say that? And he said, and the the one uh um Evan Almighty. So I looked that up and there's a date given in both those movies. There's on the digital display when when uh Clooney's looking at the display it says nine twenty three. When uh God says the world's gonna end to get in the ark it's September twenty second. On Earth September twenty second and twenty third happen simultaneously 
on each side of the world. So I don't know what God is saying, but I was snatched out of that terror, out of that pure terror. So, I mean, it was, it was the most horrific thing. These people running for their lives and screaming and wailing their arms. And then, boom, it just pulled me out of there, man. And that thing was like, you know, in CERN, that's the type of thing they have. is some kind of accelerator like that thing. I don't know, interdimensional deal. I don't know how it happened. But that's what the Lord spoke to me. I don't know what it means. I'm looking for the Lord to come any time now. So, um, please pray on this. Please pray for Patrick and I that we would get a word from the Lord. Pray for your relatives and your family. Again, preach. Go to your pastor and tell them, look, this is important. Let them watch my video. Maybe they'll think I'm Looney Tunes. I don't know, but I'm telling you, the Lord's coming, and there's a lot of pastors. The Lord told me I'm going to smite the shepherds. You see, those men are all responsible for their flocks. They need to be preaching that the Lord is coming any day. They need to make people responsible. They need, People need to go down to that front uh of the church and they need to bow before the Lord and repent, truly repent in their hearts and be saved. The Jesus, the Lord Yeshua said, you must be born again. You see that? That causes a change. And then he told them to go to the upper room and wait to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? If just being changed is enough. I wouldn't want to go before the Lord or take a risk on not being filled with the Holy Spirit. So you need to pray. And seek the Holy Spirit and the infilling. It's important. I'm not saying it's going to keep you out, but I'm saying you should get it at all costs. Why did he tell them, the 120 of the very first church, why? Okay, so now I want to pray for you guys. And I know this has been like a shotgun effect thing, but and I'm sorry. I've been pondering this for, for like four or five days now. You know, we just got back, and I had jet lag for like two two days or three days. I've been so tired. And then I was trying to, how do I say this message, you know, because it was utter, sheer terror, you know. And so, please say a word of prayer for Patrick and I. We are truly seeking the Lord on this. And I'm going to pray for you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we thank you in the mighty name of your Son, Yeshua, for all that you've done, God, for all of these things, God, for giving us food, for giving us a place to stay, for giving us the United States of America where we can believe in you without the threat of death. Thank you, Almighty God, for allowing us to be a light in the world. We want to praise you and we want to thank you, Almighty God, for who you are and for what you've done, for the systems of life that you've made. You've created all things. All emotions are created by you. All things that have been created, both seen and unseen, were created by you, Father God, through your Son. We ask that your Holy Spirit be dispatched to those who are seeking you. Father God, we ask that they would fast and pray or do whatever they have to be filled with your Holy Spirit. That they pray without ceasing until they feel a change in their hearts and in their lives. Not just say some simple prayer and think that saves them. They need to really get down and get serious with you, God, and repent of all their sins and iniquities, God. They need to ask for forgiveness. They need to seek your face with all that's in them, God. We ask that they would be encouraged, that they would be pushed to read your word and to seek again the Holy Spirit. We ask for them, for their health, God, those that are believing, that if they would just touch the screen and pray that they would be healed, that they would feel peace in their hearts. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we ask it and we pray, God, we, I say we because there are a lot of people watching this and we ask that you attend to their needs you are God you are the only one that can answer it is you who do all these things God you told me I choose when men live and when they die I decide their destiny it is you almighty God who creates the vessels of honor and dishonor it is you almighty God who are the king people forget almighty God that you are God and you alone are God that you own this entire universe and that they are just the created, and you are the creator. They belong to you. Almighty God, give them that blessed hope, because your very character is love and mercy, and you want to save them. And give them the keys 
to the kingdom. You want to do that if they would just choose you, God, and see beyond this world and the mess that's here, just like Elijah when he went up and Elisha was waiting for the double portion and the whirlwind came between them and the chariot of fire and he didn't look away. He want, you want us to look at you, to stare into your beautiful face. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be thy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, creator of all things. Glory unto his son who died on Calvary. We ask these things in the mighty name of Yeshua. We ask that you bless the Jews, that you bless Israel, God, that you bring salvation to them in the mighty name of Yeshua. We ask that you protect and guide them. In his name we ask, amen.